There's my friend. Hey, Laquisha. How are you? I I am overcoming. It has been a rough week. Uh, <laughs> and you're still shining, though. You're still smiling, so that's good. You have to, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for joining me today. I have a few questions to start off here. So what's your name? I'm Catherine Norland. All right. I like the way you say it. You almost say it like, where, where is that last name from? Norland. It's Norwegian. Norwegian. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and um, where are you from and where do you currently reside? Just like generally speaking. Sure, sure. I'm from Minnesota and I live in Southern California. Nice. Minnesota. And uh, what ethnic group do you identify as? Um, Caucasian. Caucasian. Okay. Yeah. The heritage, and, uh, heritage is mostly Swedish and Norwegian. And then there's some Irish, English, and Danish as well. Wow. That's cool that you know that. That's really cool. Uh, have you been any of those countries? I just went to Ireland last year for the first time. Oh, wow. I want to go to Ireland. What was it like? Well, I went in February. It was pretty rainy and cold. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You oh, get the warm weather. There's more touristy stuff to do, too. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, though. Yeah, I know it's it's very beautiful. I mean, what I've seen in pictures, I don't know. Yeah. It's scenery and the open uh -huh. pasture. With the sheep on it and yeah it's pretty nice so it's real the it's way real. they shoot it is how it really is and everybody's really nice uh -oh. <laughs> except that whole driving on the other side of the road thing oh That's, yeah yeah okay i could see me messing that part up for <laughs> sure and then um if you don't mind sharing your age or a range well, as an actor, you never tell your age, but um, um, <laughs> the, the age range I normally play is um, probably like 33 to like 45. I play uh -huh. characters in that range. Yeah. And I, and I love that. You do acting, you write. I know you from, from writing. Um, you started a writer's group through our church. How long ago did that? 12 years ago. Wow. I almost quit many times. <laughs> now this COVID forced me to quit, but I just had a couple students say, hey, do you want to continue this on Zoom or online or something? So I'm thinking about that, if we can get enough people to make it worthwhile. Oh, definitely. Well, I miss going, you know, since I'm here in Bakersfield and you're out there in Southern California. Maybe uh, we it's participate there. if we did yeah. that. Yeah, I'd be able to zoom in. Um, and what what have you been doing with your acting? How has the um, the pandemic affected you or benefited you in that area? Uh, it's been a little of both. It put the acting on pause for a while, mm -hmm. but the acting has resumed with some of the smaller productions. I've just mm -hmm. done my fifty sixth project for Darman Studios, and wow. he's social media influencer whose videos in the last two years have garnered more than 7 billion views. I just found out about him this year. I think I was telling you, I, I think I know whose face. I know I know whose face. I've seen your face so many times. I'm like, yeah. Catherine, because I never really get to see any of your, um, any of your work, like just right. randomly yeah. like that. I was just on Facebook and what's his name again? Dar Man, D H A R, and then the last name is M A N N. Okay, he, yeah, very inspirational. You would, you would, I think his videos would line up with what you're trying to do with this diversity chats because a lot of his uh, videos are about diversity and mm -hmm. preconceived notions, and you know, he's done videos on racism many times, social class, you name it, and it's very poignant for what people are dealing with today. Yeah, I think the one I saw was the girl with the car. She was mad she didn't get the car she wanted, and then she <laughs> appreciated the one that she got later. That oh, was yeah. fun. It was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. And then you and your husband, you guys have your own production. What have you been doing with that? 
Yeah, so good news. We just got the news this week that our feature film that we've been working on for years, our, our zombie film, Cannibal Corpse Killers, is now going to be video on demand um, August 18th. And I think it's going to be in Walmart in August. And I just got a quote from Dread Central saying, Producer Catherine Norland, actress, poet, and all-around badass. I was like, oh, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was oh. pretty cool. Um, and then I have another feature film that I'm currently looking for distribution for. And then I'm reading a lot of scripts right now. I'm, in, I'm taking classes to become a director. I've produced a lot of films over the years, but now... I would like to be directing as well. So I'm taking directing classes and I've been reading a lot of scripts to figure out what's going to be the first one I um, per, uh, direct. Yeah. Wow. I love it. You have a lot of projects going on. You've always been an inspiration to me for <laughs> <laughs> uh, being productive and, and not yeah. making excuses. So I love that about you. Yeah, it's it's almost like I became more productive after I had children because I realized my time was so short and I only have this like two hour window in the day when they're napping to get anything done. So instead of stuff taking all day long to get to, I like I knew I had to knock it out in two hours and I couldn't go, oh, I'll just do it later because they might be tearing the house apart later. So and, yeah. You know, in some ways, it's a good thing. I have less time, but in some ways, I'm more productive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I miss your little boy, your oldest. I never met your youngest, which is oh, weird because yeah. you to take care of your, your oldest. My oldest is 12, and my youngest just turned two. That's wild. Yeah. I can't you get taller than me. I, I'm, like I'm still taller than him. Okay. <laughs> By like five okay. inches. <laughs> you got a little bit of time left before he just passes you, probably. You never know. They sprout right up, though. Yeah. But I do love that about you, that you've always been um, producing creative projects. You've been intentional about being genuine to what's important to you and getting those things out to the world. You yeah. uh, shared the... Um, I know that you have, like, these prescription books. You want to yeah. talk about them? Okay. Yeah, I've, I've um, published three poetic prescription books, and uh, I've, I've put the, I just, just during the COVID, you said, how are we using our COVID time? I spent the first two months of COVID doing a complete rewrite of my first book, Poetic Prescriptions for Pesky Problems. So I just got that back from the editor, and I'm going to be going through that and formatting it and hopefully in July that will be available completely rewritten every all 77 poems in the book have been rewritten wow so that Rewrite was, that was my least favorite part about poetry <laughs> I think rewriting is everybody's least favorite part but it's the part that really takes it from that germ of a cool idea to like making it epic yeah you know? Some poems, like in my latest book that I put out in October, Poetic Prescriptions for Plaguing Problems, I have one poem in that book that took me probably three months to write just on one poem, just rewriting, making sure every single word was perfect, even having that thesaurus open. Are we sure this is the exact right word? And yeah, so <laughs> I can get carried away for too long, but yeah. That's a gift. That's definitely a gift. And I really feel like I probably wouldn't be doing this now if I wasn't close enough to you to be inspired, you know, to just be productive. So thank you so much. Awesome. I'm and glad for the inspiration. Sometimes you you wonder if what you're doing is really making a difference or if people are taking note or you're like, am I just talking to the wind here? No. No. And I know I was always dragging my feet, so thank you for uh, still letting me in your house <laughs> and into your group to still say, yes, I promise I'm a writer, even though I didn't do anything. Um, so thank but you for that. You know, sometimes you just have to rub elbows with those who are doing stuff to get inspired, and there's nothing wrong with that. They say you become like the five people you spend the most time with, so you don't yeah. want to be hanging around other people that aren't doing anything, and like the other saying goes, if you're the smartest one in your circle, then you need a new circle. You want to be 
elevated up to someone else's level, you don't want to be the smartest and most productive one in your group. Otherwise, there's nothing to aspire to because then you're like, oh, I'm all good. I'm doing more than all my friends. So why try, you know, why do more? Right, right. It's true. It's true. It's actually a practice that I'm I'm noticing myself do right now even is that I'm going into atmospheres where I'm the weakest link on purpose to be able to uh -huh. rise up. And I'm thinking... You know what? It's a beautiful space to be able to like get your ego out of the way and yeah, and be like, I want to become better, you know, and not just perceive to have this perception of my best because I know I'm not at my best, and I don't think anyone is at their best. Best, we're always constantly improving. So yeah, yeah, every day if you can get better than your former self, <laughs> yes, definitely. that's a challenge and a feat, and it's well worth the pursuit of. Yeah, and I know one of your your books. Um, actually, I held a needle in the picture for it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> well, you actually, you actually helped me with my second book and my third book. My second. Did I? Oh yeah, yeah, the dress. You held the needle in the on the cover shot, and then inside the book, I got you squeezing my jelly roll. Squeezing oh yeah. <laughs> that was an awkward. That was a uh, uncomfortable uh, request, but yes, uh, hey. <laughs> do it for the art gonna squeeze my fat it's gonna be laquisha <laughs> i appreciate that i love that that book is about um you know kind of like identity it's about um insecurities and different things like that that's why you're kind of pointing out like a love handle or kind yeah. of well, being yourself it's kind of yeah there's so much talk about loving yourself for who you for who you are these days and who god made you and that the inspiration of that book, Poetic Prescriptions for Eternal Youth, was this 20-year battle I had with self-hate starting when I was a teenager. Wow. So I finally had to reconcile that I couldn't say, oh, this sunset is beautiful, or Lord, this beach is beautiful, oh, these animals are beautiful, and knowing God created all of these things, and He created me, and how could I look in the mirror and say, oh, you're a disgusting, ugly piece of junk, you know. How could I say that about God's greatest creation? At the first five days he's creating stuff, he's saying, it's good. God made this and it was good. God made that and it's good. God made this and it was good. And then when he made us, he was like, it is very good. And he wow. stopped after that. He was like, drop the mic. I got nothing <laughs> creating LaQuisha. Aww. Can't improve on that. <laughs> yeah, our, yeah. God made humans, and he was he was pleased with us. And it, it really is hard because what do you think it is that that happens in our mind or or in our atmosphere that affects how we look in the mirror at ourselves? I know for me, it was a lot of probably comparing myself to other people who I thought, you know, if I just looked like them, then people would accept me, or if I was just. Yeah, if I had a, if I had a better body, if I had a, a higher IQ, if I had a, a, a nicer tan, if I had eye colors that matched, I, I love your eyes. <laughs> whatever it was, um, I think society had a lot to do with. It. When you look at women on the cover of a magazine, at least when I was a teenager, I didn't know there was such a thing as Photoshop. I didn't know that those women had any imperfections because they never out the wrinkles, the airbrush out the pimples, and I had super severe acne for most of my life. And I didn't know they airbrushed out the cellulite, so I just thought, here's all these women, and I'm hideous. I'm disgusting. Who would ever want to be my friend? You know, mm -hmm. only to find out even those people in the magazines don't look like the people in the magazines because they go through having professional hair and makeup team work on them for hours, perfect wardrobe, all the right lighting, all the people making them, they take hundreds of pictures. Then when they get the perfect picture, they then Photoshop the heck of it. And, and it's not, none of it's real. And I was listening to all the lies from the enemy saying, you're not enough, you're not enough and pointing out all my flaws. And I had to finally had to, reconciled what the scripture had to say about me and realized that the way God made me is perfect and that he is strong in my weakness. And I had to come to terms with, you know what? I, I'm actually better not being perfect. I'm better being weak because then 
God can fill in all the empty spaces. And, and if I if I had all the right money, if I came from the right background, if I had the best pedigree, if I looked like a perfect Barbie doll, then maybe when I accomplished things in life, I wouldn't, I couldn't point to God because people would say, oh, it's because of her looks, her talent, her money, her family. And I couldn't go, no, it was God because I had this going against me, this going against me, this going against me. So now I see it as a huge blessing that God can use me in my weakness. That's beautiful. How do you feel like, um, you know, getting around to self-love, having a better sense of uh, self-love affects diversity and how we see other people as well as ourselves intermingled together? Yeah. Um, Well, I can tell you one thing. When I hated myself, I was mean, nasty, angry, and rude to everybody around me. I think a lot of the hate going on, not all of it, um, is because people don't love themselves. They, yeah. If you hate yourself, you're going to find fault in everybody else around you. Or you're mm. going to be angry at them, jealous of them. Um, yeah, I, I certainly, when I had self-hate issues, I was a, not a nice person. But when I started mm. loving myself and accepting myself, I think it was easier... I feel like this is like, there's like two different camps of people because when I hated myself, I was mean and nasty to people, but there are people who love themselves and think that they're the best and everyone else is below them. And if you don't fit this certain criteria, so it's like two different camps. You can be mean to people because you don't like yourself, but you can be mean to people because you have a false sense of who you are thinking that you're better than someone else when God created every single one of us equal. He said there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, uh, slave nor free, that, that we're all equal in his sight and we all have the opportunity to have been made in his image and likeness and to all have dominion over the earth. So the outer package shouldn't matter. Um, you know, I think of the... Martin Luther King Jr., when he did the I Have a Dream speech, and he said something about, I I don't know the exact quote, but I long to see the day when my four children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. Right. And that's the heart of God. He mm-hmm. longs for us to be, he judges us by our heart. So if, right. we're, judging, if we're judging other people by anything other than that, especially things they have no control over you you didn't have control over how you got blessed with more melon than me you know <laughs> yeah so i'm putting the, the sunless tanning lotion on so i can have a little more of it and then there's You're people so- <laughs> like uh, that are trying to take theirs away and it's it's sad because god made the rainbow <laughs> yeah it is it, it's beautiful to be able to get to a place of accepting yourself and embracing your hair, you know, whatever your hair type is, or oh, your complexion. Yeah. <laughs> I know that that's a you know, oh certain, yeah. <laughs> Some people in the say no, my hair, leave my hair out of the conversation. But even I mean, yeah. being able to embrace yourself fully is my point. Is is yeah. more freeing and it makes life a little bit more, definitely more enjoyable. And I know that you're. Um, Going, you're doing a diversity. Uh, is it a program that you're working on? Did you want to talk about it? Uh, sure. I, well, it's not specifically on diversity, but it is on self-love and okay. who you are and how different you are than others plays a role in it. But I'm creating an online course with huh. probably at least 10 hours of content that I've huh. learned last 20 years on how to see myself and love myself the way God does. So I have the courage to go for my dreams. Basically, I want to teach people the steps I had to go through because I started out as someone that was so painfully shy and insecure. I literally could not even order a pizza over the telephone. I was such riddled with anxiety and in such fear of people and such like self-hate that I I couldn't even function in normal life to now being able to be on on stage in front of thousands of people and not and share my darkest secrets and not 
not even bat an eye because I want to help people. I want people to know how worthy they how worthy they are and how mm-hmm. God sees them so they don't have to have the hang ups anymore and they can finally start going to going for their dreams because they know that they're worth it and they have that their weakness isn't going to stop them, how they look isn't going to stop them, their pedigree, where they came from, what other people think of them, and to just blow through all of the excuses that have been holding them back so they can truly see themselves as the powerful, chosen, victorious, unstoppable person God made them to be. That's beautiful. How do you, how do you, uh, do that? <laughs> like, what's one tip? Not giving away your whole yeah, yeah. process. One sure. tip. One tip? Um, to not be held back by anything. Mm-hmm. Well, well, there, there's, I, I do a bonus course. Um, it's called the three G's. There's three G's that you can if you use these three G's, nothing will it will it will demolish every excuse you have, and you will be unstoppable. And the three okay. G's answer any excuse and conquer any problem. Are if you have God, God's word specifically, knowing God's word, good friends that you can trust, that you can ask advice to, because my people perish for lack of wisdom. And number three, Google. If you have those things, you can do anything because it's easy to sit here and go, well, I can't, I can't become a ballerina because I'm 300 pounds. Have you Googled heavy set ballerinas plus that you can find the answer to everything. If you think, oh, well, I, I, I can't do this because, um, I can't, I can't make a difference in the kingdom of God because I'm, um, I'm a prostitute. Well, look at Rahab. She was a prostitute. She helped God's people, and she be, ended up being in the lineage that birthed in Jesus Christ. It's it's like whatever excuse you have, you can find the answer in the Bible of someone who's way more messed up than you, but God yeah. still them to accomplish great things. I mean, David, who had slept with someone else's wife and then had the dude killed, so no one, and God's like, this is a man after my own heart. So, <laughs> So if right? you mess with what you have done, you can yeah. find stories in the scripture that 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 just bl- obliterate your excuse. And if you can't find if you can't find them specifically there, you can ask your good friends for counsel who are godly friends, and and have them put themselves in your place. I had to. I went through this with a friend of mine. She was debating on whether she should get divorced from this guy who cheated on her multiple times. But they had gone to counseling. They got remarried. He wasn't cheating in person but he was having these internet affairs and so she's like well i should forgive him i should that you know and i went through an exercise with her where i said now what if i was asking you for advice and what if i told you he did this he's been doing this inappropriate sexual stuff with these women online and this and this and when you're able to take yourself out of it and get uh, unattach yourself from the emotions and Mm -hmm. see it as somebody else's problem it's much easier to solve and go hey no i would tell you Catherine, run from that guy and when she was able to tell me as if i was going through it she was able to think more clearly so Mm -hmm. yeah god's word good friends and google would be the answer to that i love it and i'm glad that god over google (laughs) but i I also love that you you mentioned google it reminds me of marie forleo she says that everything is figure outable and um you know sometimes we forget i mean it's 2020 so much information is at our fingertips so it is important to just even if it seems crazy because that's how i felt before there's no way anybody has a video about this and then Yes, there is. <laughs> so just type it in and remain curious. Yeah. And yeah. One of the things that you said reminds me uh, of self love a little bit because it, I've heard people say, you know, um, bad things about themselves. And then people said to them, don't you say that about my friend, you know? And, and it's kind of like, you know, you're talking bad about my friend. I'm going to defend them. My friend just happens to be the you and you're saying bad things about yourself and so i love that concept of getting away from um our you know 
detaching ourselves a little bit emotionally or whatever. We're just too close to see the whole view and think of it more as for someone you love. And I think if you learn to love yourself, then it's easier to be able to do that when nobody yeah. else is around. But it is good to have good friends. And I was talking to my my friend Tiana about that a moment ago. Um, nice. So, yeah, the right support is very helpful. Well, we're almost done. Um, but I did want to have you on this chat, too, because of the, uh, the racial tension that I feel like is an elephant that's been forced into the room of my, my friendships with people. And I'm wondering how you feel about that, um, the things that are going around. Uh, do you... So let me tell you how I feel. I feel like um, there's this weird thing, like I'm not supposed to be friends with white people for, with, just to be on the nose about it, you know, not yeah. based off of how I feel, but based off of the way people are speaking on my behalf. You know what I mean? So that's why one of the reasons why I'm having this chat, um, yeah. it's an elephant of racial tension forced into a room that it's not welcome here. It's not welcome between us. And so I wanted to have you on on this diversity chat for that how have you been feeling with some of the content that's been out there yeah um it's a really painful painful topic um because i don't i don't think hate belongs anywhere in any form and i i really believe that any form of hate is from from the enemy it's from the devil because god is a god of love he doesn't put stipulations on his love he doesn't tell you love everybody except people who look different than you love everybody except people who believe different than you love everybody except people who vote different than you right just says to love everybody right so for me i don't think there is people people also right now on social media they're determining they think they know what's in your heart by what you post or what you don't post. Mm -hmm. And um, I have so many friends of so many different races, but I haven't been this time around, other times around when there was um, violence by cops and, uh, you know, on our black brothers and sisters, I was posting about it. I was writing poems about it. I was doing all this stuff. And this time around, I haven't really, I haven't really posted on it. I've had, more importantly to me, I've had a lot of in-person conversations with people like you, mm. friends of mine, specifically in person, not, not something that I'm going to put on social media for people to pick apart or try to think they know what's in my heart or mind because of how I phrase something. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to be part, I've been seeing a lot of people instead of creating unity around the diversity pulling things apart and attacking people based on what they say or don't say. Like, um, I had a lot of my black friends saying, if you're silent, that means you agree with everything. And I, I'm thinking to myself, I just, I'm not feeling comfortable saying anything in particular right now. Like, I know how I feel. I know how I treat people. I know mm -hmm. that this that racism in every form is despicable and it's wrong. But just because I don't post about it doesn't mean I agree with it and I think it's right. So I've been kind of staying out of the boiling pot for, I've been feeling attacks coming against me wow. for, I don't know, for me personally, just this week, I had a, a good friend of mine, um, say that she, that she thought I was a hateful person and I I can't even I can't, can't even pinpoint why except I feel this there's this like like you said this racial tension and and my mm -hmm. uh, good friend today she said to me do you think the 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 black and white thing right now is why she's coming against you and I said I don't know I don't know why any of this is happening I don't know why All I know is that we don't wrestle like what the Bible says. I, I, I am not an enemy with anybody on earth, no matter what they look like. I, I have people who, and I, yesterday, this friend of mine who said that I had hated my heart and that she didn't want to be my friend anymore, I cried for six and a half hours. Aww. I wouldn't insert that you are not a hateful person. I wouldn't be able to, I've known you for like 10 years or something. I, there's no way... 
that I could have even, maybe not 10 years, like eight years, no way I could be <laughs> associated with you this long if you were a hateful person. Yeah. So I just puke that in the name of Jesus. That's not true. Yeah. So I was, I was just so down yesterday and I'm thinking, man, one of my, one of my, one of my black friends thinks I have hate in my heart and doesn't want to be my friend anymore. But then I have another black friend who's going to be inter interviewing me tomorrow on this very thing. So I was like, you know what? It's really just the devil hard at work. And the scriptures, Jesus said, they hate you because they hated me first. So, you know, all we can do is do the best we can to show love and how, in, in our imperfect way. Maybe we're going to say things or do things that offend people. Maybe it's not on purpose, but I also think if, you know, the Bible says if a brother sins against you, go to that brother and talk to them. It doesn't say, you know, just cut them off. Don't them ask, off. you know, just don't ask for an explanation or don't, you just don't give them the time of day. So, you know, it hurt my, it, hurt, it really hurt my heart. <laughs> Which, so, I, honestly, it sounds weird, but I think it's good that it hurt your heart because if it didn't, you'd be cold. But, but I think the fact that it did hurt your heart proves that you have a good heart, you know? So may that be confirming for you. And I really value, again, our friendship. You're basically my, you didn't sign up to be my mentor, but you're basically my writing mentor. So thank you <laughs> for your friendship in that as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the chat here. I really enjoyed the conversation. Let me give my spiel. Okay. Um, so thank you for joining me thank you everybody for joining us on the chat as well and uh, please join us for the next diversity chat where we destroy ignorance before it destroys another life um if you Catherine, have anything else to share here at the closing before uh instagram kicks us off please do <laughs> oh sure i I would like all your fans to have um, the book that Laquisha is her hands are on the cover of and where she's squeezing my fat. I would like all your all your fans to have a copy of my book for free. So oh my God. To, yeah, to get it, you can download it by going to www.poeticprescriptions.com forward slash free book. That's poeticprescriptions.com slash free book. That's beautiful. Thank you for doing that because I know it's coming from a pure place and I appreciate that. And um, if you at all have a picture, do you have it on hand, your book cover? Oh, no, but they'll get the, you can get it when you when you go. You can da you can download the book and have it. And sure. And that, that's journey from self-hate to self-love. So if anybody's you know feeling that, I think it will help them through. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you. I value your time. It's good to see your face. I haven't seen in a while. And yeah. I hope you're we'll around soon again. Thank you so much, LaQuisha. I'm honored to be your friend.